The chaotic race, it's Thursday, for New York City mayor took another turn yesterday, one day after the city's Board of Elections released and then rescinded new results in the Democratic primary contest. New numbers show former city sanitation commissioner Catherine Garcia, who was behind by 13 points previously, now trailing former police captor, captain Eric Adams by just two points. These numbers are largely in line with the faulty results released on Tuesday. The BOA, BOE, later called the mishap to, quote, unacceptable error when 135,000 test votes that were meant to be cleared from its system were reported in the vote count. This prompted a lawsuit from the Adams campaign. Yesterday, it announced it is petitioning the court to, quote, preserve our right to a fair election process. More than 120,000 absentee ballots still remain unaccounted for as the city uses a ranked choice voting system for the first time. What a mess. Here now with more on that, City Hall and politics reporter for WNYC, Bridget Bergen. And Bridget, I could see how the candidates would be getting pretty stressed out at this point, wanting the numbers to be counted and counted right, and the people of New York as well. Absolutely, Mika. I mean, I think one of the most important things when we look at those tallies, though, to remember is that these are just interim results. The results that were released this week were never intended to be the final results. And while the error made by the Board of Elections was egregious and uh, is understandable that it would shake the confidence of voters and the candidates, the good thing is that they identified it before it was part of any additional tallies or certainly any certification process. Uh, the other part to remember is while the race has narrowed significantly with Eric Adams with only a, a two-point lead over Catherine Garcia, Maya Wiley, they, they, the tally says eliminated. She it was only behind Catherine Garcia by about 347 votes. And as hmm. you said, there are 120,000 outstanding absentee ballots that are not included in that tally. And so we are it is very fair to say that this race is still wide open, still being uh, still very much alive. And even those lawsuits, while that is something that procedurally candidates do rather routinely. It's, it's a product of New York state election law. They have to file these uh, orders in order to protect their right to challenge any ballots within 10 days of the primary. So that would be tomorrow, uh, Friday. And so these are preemptive mm -hmm. actions, but they don't necessarily speak to anything that has happened so far. It just guarantees that these candidates have a right when they are canvassing these absentee ballots to raise objections. And had they not submit those orders, they wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, Bridget, uh, you know, as you said, Maya Wiley is not going to drop out of the race. And why on earth would she if you have Garcia trailing by only 2 percent, Eric Adams, and then Maya Wiley trailing by only 347 votes with 120,000 absentee out there? So uh, as this process worked, how could Maya Wiley be declared eliminated? Well, what they were doing was giving us our first look at what the ranked tallies uh, looked like. And so just to be clear, on primary night, we saw a snapshot of how voters uh, identified their first choice votes. This was the first time we saw when they took into account people's second through fifth choice votes and showed us the tallies using this ranked choice algorithm. And so, you know, this again, it's a snapshot. We have additional votes that need to factor into this total. One of the things is looking at where some of these absentee ballots are coming from. Um, if you were to try and, you know, do a little bit of a game analysis, a lot of these absentee ballots are from Manhattan. That's where Catherine Garcia won uh, the largest share of the votes. However, there are also votes coming in, obviously, from all five boroughs. I think one of the things we'll be watching is as we see the next tally, which is expected on uh, next Tuesday, July 6th, how much do these numbers change? Because the one thing that is certain is that these numbers will change. Mm. Bridget, uh, and Richard Haas, the company who manages the software used in the election tells NBC News that the Board of Elections repeatedly denied its offers of assistance. According to the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, the BOE refused to accept training, education, a blind review, and an offer to run parallel tabulation for the primary. The company says it continued to reach out via email, phone calls, and even 
an in-person visit, but those efforts were ignored. A BOE spokesperson told NBC News, that's Board of Elections, quote, the software was not the issue, adding the problem was human error. I don't know what makes me feel better, Richard Haas. Uh, what do you make of this? <laughs> Nothing should make you feel better about this. This is <laughs> incompetence this is on steroids. This is corruption on, on steroids. The people on this commission, mm -hmm. the Board of Elections, should not be there. These are political hacks who are totally unqualified to oversee anything. They shouldn't be overseeing their breakfasts. Then you have the situation, why in the world is the Board of Elections releasing these results, which are meaningless? Until you've counted the, the absentee ballots, how can you possibly release uh, votes or numbers about rank, rank choice voting? They, they, they have no meaning. They have no, no, no standing. This is a deeply flawed system. Unfortunately, it's going to be extraordinarily hard to fix. It's not in the purview of the next mayor or the governor. But this, 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 you know, Michael Kinsley once said, what's scandalous is what's legal. This is a scandal for the people of New York, and it's not going to make life easy for the next mayor, who quite possibly is yeah. going to begin under some kind of a cloud. And, Bridget, this is not, of course, the first time the BOA has publicly displayed its incompetence. You can go back through the last several elections and find problems there. But, you know, ranked choice voting has its proponents. Uh, is this the end of ranked choice voting in New York City, perhaps, based on how this has been rolled out? And just basically on how long it's going to take, even under the best of circumstances, to determine a mayor? Well, again, I think... It is not going to be the end of ranked choice voting because this is a voter approved ballot referendum. And so to end it would require voters approving an initiative to repeal it. Um, there is proposed legislation to do that, but um, I think we're a long way from that point. Certainly, I think there will be a very critical review from lawmakers at the local and state level about how this election was run and to what degree rules need to change to account for um, ranked choice voting as part of the process. But in terms of the timing, I mean, I, it, it is important to remember that the timing here in terms of getting the full and complete result is a product of state election law. It is a product of when the Board of Elections is allowed to count absentee ballots. There is a push to uh, and legislation that has been passed at the state level that would allow for absentee ballots to be counted sooner. Um, and that could help speed up this process. But again, at this point, it's not really the ranked choice voting tally that's slowing things down. It's the rules around you know, how we conduct elections, the way we mail out ballots when we're allowed to count them. That is really what is part of this, the slowing up this process. All right, City Hall and politics reporter for WNYC, Bridget Bergen, thank you very much. And coming up, a lot going on. What the New York Times learned about the Capitol riot after analyzing thousands of videos of the attack. Plus, a new ranking of the U.S. presidents by their leadership ability. Morning Joe is coming right back. <laughs>